please join me in welcoming Jordan Holmes and Kevin Stonewall. Hello, everybody. Be a little bit more enthusiastic than that. Hi, everybody. How y'all doing? Hey. 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 What's up? What's up? I'm doing well. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you all uh, this beautiful Monday morning. Um, I am just going to kind of moderate and ask a couple of questions to Kevin. If you want to ask about me, we can talk about it later. I'll tell you a little bit of myself as we a uh, little bit about myself as we go along. Um, but mainly, I'm going to grill him all about his life. Okay. So if that's cool, with y'all say cool. All right, um, so I feel like we might as well just start it off with some of the basic stuff. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a bit about what you do. Yes, exactly. So everybody, once again, good morning, happy Monday. I'm Kevin Stonewall, like I said, born and raised on the south side of Chicago, so it feels good to be back home. Um, so a little bit about what I do. So I'm a cancer researcher, and uh, one of the first cancers that I started working with was colon cancer, and really trying to find and understand the impact that aging has on initiating an anti-tumor response when exposed to a tumor vaccine that's called mitoxantron. Uh, when I did that, I did find out that 100% of those mice, once challenged with the colon cancer cell, did in fact survive the cancer. So basically what that means is uh, the tumor grew and it went away. Uh, later on in college, we also worked with two other cancers, neuroblastoma and osteosarcoma. All of my you know, science experiment pretty much fall under the umbrella of cancer immunotherapy which is generally targeting your immune system to reject cancer pathogens. Um, with osteosarcoma and neuroblastoma, what I worked on is trying to improve allogeneric bone marrow transplant through trying to increase a graft versus tumor response, which we know it as GVT, while reducing graft versus host disease, so GVHD. And that's pretty much an inflammatory response once your body is exposed to an antigen. So um, hopefully that, you know, I can, I can break things down, but for the most part, that's what I worked with. Yeah. No, for sure. Awesome, man. Awesome. What, what, what motivated you um, to get into that type of research? I'm sure it's, it's, it's uh, very important and um, impactful. I know uh, that there are a lot of cancers that, you know, I would say plague uh, uh, us globally as a right. population. So what, what kind yeah. of motivated you? Well, I think really my big inspiration in going to cancer research was my freshman year of high school. Um, I had a friend who uncle passed away from cancer. And um, I the thing was, I realized that he wasn't the same person. You know, I was in high school, it was my freshman year actually. Uh, he stopped going to school, um, he was real mellow. Like, he used to be one of like, the most outgoing people. He just wasn't the same. So I went and asked him, like, hey, what's going on? He told me about his uncle. And at that point, you know, I thought to myself, like, wow, that's crazy. Like, he, it's changing, he's not even the one with cancer. Um, so what I did at 14, I went to my best friend, Google, <laughs> and I typed in, what is cancer? And at the time, honestly, at 14, I didn't really know too much about cancer. Like, you hear it all the time, but I really couldn't really define it. And then I learned that cancer is like, there's a, a whole bunch of cells that's going through the cell cycle times 100 uncontrollably. And then you have tumor formation, and, you know, the tumor spreads, and eventually that's what causes people to pass away from cancer. And I, at that point, I started reading about it. I was like, wow, like, I really want to, like, do something about it. And then I researched how do I stop cancer? And then I read about like different advocacy programs, like the American Cancer Society. Yep. I was like 14, I'm like, I don't have money, so I can't really donate too much. Yeah. Uh, but I did see the opportunity to learn about doing research in the lab. And uh, fast forward my junior year of high school, I uh, emailed and I applied to a lot of internships and that's how I ended up at Rush. And yeah. colon cancer, I had a you know, conversation uh, with my PI and the PI is a principal investigator. So that's like the guy who's head over the lab. And um, we were just talking about different cancers, and he was just throwing out so many more. And then I remember actually I had a conversation um, with my grandma, and she was telling me somebody at the church, at her church at least, passed away from colon cancer. And at that point, at 17, I just wanted to learn about research. I just wanted to learn about cancer. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna work with that cancer. And it just yeah. kind of like fell from there. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's, a, that's an awesome story. Does anybody um, have any family that have been affected by uh, cancer is not, not to be? Too. Yeah, so that's an impressive, impressive hand raise. And, and the thing that you um, brought up is that, you know, it's not just, <clears throat> it's not just one person. It definitely is, you know, affecting families and, and uh, everybody involved. Sorry, y'all, I'm trying to make this not feedback. Um, so with that being said, 
uh, a more a little bit more about your um, life in terms of being a student. Were you right. you know were you always kind of a good a good? Actually, I'm just making the assumption that you were a good student. <laughs> Do y'all think he was a good student? Because I'm just gonna make the assumption that that he was. I was okay. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. Because I'll, I'll tell you here. I'll give you this will be my, my little spiel. I actually was not that good of a student personally. Um, y'all want to take a guess at what you think I graduated with? Like my uh, GPA? Anybody? I heard 2.5, 3.2, 4. 4.0, 4. I wish, my man. <laughs> Actually, uh, I graduated with a 2.19 GPA. I had almost like 30, 35 missed days of school. Almost didn't walk across the stage. Um, but I'm only saying that to say, even if the road gets rocky a little bit early on, you always have time to turn it around. You can ask me about that later if you care to, again hot seat back on you. <laughs> um, how, how, was your, how was your path as a, as, a, as a student? Did you have many uh, trials and tribulations or have you always been able to focus in? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, always, I think generally I've always been like a pretty, pretty good student for the most part. I think like non-discipline was always there. Yeah. I think for me, I didn't always like get things right away, but I had really good discipline. Like honestly, nice. both of my parents are in the education field, so I like education, I always valued it, you know? Mm -hmm. So at that point, I just had to find something that I was good at, and once I found out I was like good at science, I was like, okay, I like it too. So the discipline was there, um, but generally, yeah, I, have, I, I guess I was a pretty good student for the most part. But yeah. in my, my trials and tribulations, for example, uh, even like in high school, um, interesting fact, like I tried to do the science fair my first three years of high school, never made it out the school competition. Y'all know when y'all do the science fair, and you had a school, then you go to regional, then you go to city, then international. I couldn't even make it out to school. Like, I, I remember I used to be so, like, I was kind of bitter about it, to be honest, but it was motivation. Like, I got the participant award. I didn't even get, like, third place, nothing like that. <laughs> so it's funny because um, for me, I was like, I, I'm, I'm gotta, I got to make something happen. I remember my third year, uh, I told my mom, I remember this. I was like, Mom, like, next year, I'm going I'm to make it to the International Science Fair. Like, I'm talking it. It's going to happen, and I'm going to make it happen. Like, you got to believe it. And uh, funny enough, that next year, then I used my colon cancer project as my high school science fair project. And um, I rightfully so, I won first in school. I, you know, I went through the basic, all those different levels. I competed in the CPS science fair. Um, ended up winning you know, the top four in there, being able to go to the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair. So yeah. uh, it worked out. Yeah, very nice, man. very nice. Yeah, you can, you can clap at, at any point, by the way. Yeah. It can, be, it can be more of an engaging thing. I know we're a little bit far away, but it's cool. We, we, we can all be family and talk about it. Um, that is beautiful. Also, make some noise for his parents in the house. I got to meet him back, backstage very briefly. Um, so it sounds like they were um, a crucial role, you know, kind of into, in, into helping you uh, become who you are today. But, uh, you know, did you have any other mentors present or any other friends present that maybe kind of helped along? that uh, trajectory as well? Yeah, no, so it's two people. Uh, Dr. Carl Ruby, that was my first PI. Like, he was a guy who gave me a chance. He really enriched that like, confidence that I could do this. Like, honestly, before I started doing research, like, I knew I was good at school, but I truly didn't really think I was smart. And I'm just being, like, brutally honest. Uh, it was just because of that science, for, for example. It was like I kept being rejected. Things weren't, you know, working out the way I thought it was going to. So I started questioning myself. Um, but once I started being around Dr. Ruby, he, he always told me, like, Kevin, there's no such thing as a silly question. It's science. You never know how that question is going to brainstorm to another question. And, you know, we're both in this industry, and we understand how brainstorming work. You have so many different ideals, but at the end of the day, you're able to bounce off, especially when you're, like, talking with other people and you bounce ideals, new ideals, and they just create innovative, um, you know, ideals and technology and whatnot. But for me, I love that theory so much. Like, I want all of y'all to really think about that. There's no such thing as a silly question because you never know how that's going to lead to another question. It could be the most fundamental question. Even for me, it started with, what is cancer? But everything expanded from there. Everything manifested into deeper ideals. That's what I want you all to take away from it because that's the mindset that I have now. And that's why I'm a lot more comfortable doing what I'm doing today. For me, you know, being here to speak, some past story, I used to be one of the quietest and shyest kids in the classroom but I love speaking, like I love it. And because I had that confidence that Dr. Ruby kind of instilled in me that I could do really anything I want, I have to give it a try. Can I speak? You know, I never know. I went out and I tried it and I think I, I love it, you know? So Dr. Ruby and I, my high school counselor, Ms. Pointer, 
Uh, Ms. Pointer, I'm gonna send you the video link for this. <laughs> um, but Ms. Pointer, she was always there through our high school too. I used to always like tell her my, my vision, what I wanted to go for in college. And uh, one program that I did throughout high school uh, was at, at Northwestern. It was like this Northwestern, it's called H Prep, and it was like a pre-med program like for the high school to get exposure with how medical school would be like. Yeah. And um, I always told her, I'm like, I really want to like go do, become a doctor, I want to do research, work in the medical field. And she was like, yo, Kevin, I think you really like this program. So those two people really, you know, outside of my family and my parents, like those people really was like my biggest advocate. And I'm so thankful for all those people who've been around yeah. me, you know. That's awesome, that's, that's very awesome, that's very awesome. Um, so. Um, <clears throat> So the other uh, question, you actually brought up something about uh, confidence and kind of, you know, kind of getting that um, confidence. And I know personally, we were actually kind of talking about it mm -hmm. uh, behind stage, especially when you're kind of coming from a, a, a field that may not, not necessarily have a lot of folks that, mm -hmm. that uh, look like you. Right. So I, I, you know, I know personally, I kind of dealt with um, digging myself out of um, a whole of, of being able to feel like I was capable enough mm -hmm. to, to do something. Um, funny, as, funny as you mentioned in one yeah. of your mentors, I had a, a mentor ask um, you know, a, a question of why am I uh, studying to be a technician when I'm you know, smart enough to be a, a scientist or uh, beyond. And that, was that, that same question kind of gave me a little bit of the, of the, of the confidence to, to move forward. So how do you deal with the mental health aspect of uh, developing that confidence. I know that some, some of that kind of started it off, but how do you nurture that on a regular basis as you're you know, moving forward with uh, difficult problems ahead of you? And make yeah. sure this yeah, mic is, uh, there you go. So yeah. I think you know, throughout my journey, I definitely have like those challenges, but I think that uh, one, a few of the things, so one thing, I love events. I, I know sometimes for me, I, I hold things in a lot, but I like when I talk to uh, a lot of my close friends, I talk to my family, I tend to just really get a lot of things off my chest. But when I do it, like everything's all good. And for me, it's like, all right, cool, I got that off my chest. I can keep grinding. Um, but also what I do, I always just write down things. I write down ideas. I write down what's currently on my mind. For me, it's kind of, it's nurturing. It's relaxing. Uh, and, and when I do have time, I just like to be normal too. I like to play basketball. So I'm, I can always play a game of 21 or V. I'm probably going to win. Um, but <laughs> Uh, no, it's just things like that. I just really try my best to separate myself from this environment just because it's going to give me a new perspective. And it's going to be refreshing. Like, I literally, I, back on my college campus, I remember, I don't know if you all know what a moped is. Do anybody here know what a moped is? I do. Okay, cool. So, at my, on my campus at the University of Wisconsin Madison, if you had a moped, you, know, you was cool. You was legit. Yeah, for real. Yeah, no, for real. Um, I never seen a moped until I got to college. Um, but I was like, when I first got on campus, I'm like, I'm going to get a moped because that's pretty cool. Um, but I mean, even in college, like what I would do, I would like get on my moped and I just like drive around campus, listen to music. And that's a big thing too. Music just gets me in the mold. It gets me in just in a different world. And I just be on my moped cruising. If you ask anybody on my campus, they'd be like, yeah, Kevin, he always be having his, his beach has fallen, be just zooming, zooming on his moped. <laughs> <laughs> so little things like that. I just really just try to do things different and separate because at the end of the day, I just really want to just be, have fun with what I'm doing and by yeah. doing other things. You can't, have, you can't work too hard. You can't do too much of one thing. You got to yeah. balance it out. So. Yeah, no, that's, that's dope. Um, does anybody feel like they, they have any like, trouble maybe balancing, prioritizing, having that confidence in school? Just show of hands. I'm just trying to get an idea. Nope. Maybe. It's totally normal, too, maybe. by the way. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> well, actually, switching gears a little bit, but not by, by, by much. So I know, um, in general, you know, with all, all of the research work that, that you're doing, that's a clear show of, of your passion for kind of bringing more of what uh, the world needs. Can you maybe sh stress to some of our audience, you know, just kind of from the position that, that, that you're in, you know, looking out, what, what would you like to see more of coming from uh, the youth? You know, would you like to see it more science-based, more, um, you know, what do you think the world needs a bit more of? Yeah, I love that question, actually, because, I mean, me and my younger brother, we actually talk about it a lot. And uh, I, honestly, of course, I would love to see more people in the science, technology, engineering, and math field, and that would be wonderful. But quite frankly, not everybody, that's not everybody's passion. It might sound cliche, but I want people to move with purpose. That's what I want to see from you all. You know, really, every move that you will all do, make it intentional and make sure you're putting your all into it. Like, honestly, that's really the key. That's how we got to the position we are in today. I want you all to, don't, don't be afraid to take a risk. Be, just know when you do take that risk, it's not going to be clear cut. There might be some challenges, but it's up to you all how you all are going to navigate through that. 
are you all going to let that be an L or you are going to make that L into a lesson? And that's how really just be, you got to get your hands dirty. And the best teacher, the best lessons is through experience. Don't be afraid to get dirty with it. You know, like that's the best lesson. That's something that you can't read in the textbook. You can only read so much, but after a while, you just got to go out and do it. For me, it was just going out and asking researchers, hey, can I work in your lab, applying to different internships? For some, it might be if you want to, you know, become that jazz band or whatever, get it started. You know, find mentors. Don't be afraid to just go out there and just make it happen. Be a go-getter. I want you all to be go-getters because, honestly, we live in an age where it can happen. Like, you, you literally have the Internet. There's a way to make it happen. And uh, that's why I know that you all are doing that already because this generation, you all, you all are just changing the world. You all are a different breed. And uh, I definitely want you all to just remember, go-getter. This is my future. You control your life. You the narrative. Control it. We got a clap for that one. Uh. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny, you all are like the most respectful crowd ever, but also like a little feedback too. You can say woo if you hear something that you like. I mean, you know, everybody's... Um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, you, I, I, I definitely um, like that last uh, response. And kind of with that, I'm, I'm curious to know, I know for me, the way that I make sure that I stay uh, productive is with a lot of, a lot of, ref a, fl a lot of reflection, a lot of, a lot of uh, prioritizing of, you know, task and, and a lot of very uh, deliberate focus. So could you like walk me or walk us through, you know, a potential day for you? How do you make sure that you keep the wheels churning when you're, you know, trying to, trying to better the world yourself? Um, so a big thing what I do, I try my best every day to write like a, I, I put my life in like different categories. I'm like, all right, this part of my life, this part of my life, like social or brand or science or um, you know, different aspects. But then I write down what I need to do in each of these categories. For me, my philosophy behind it is this is how I'm going to create a well-balanced life. I got to write a certain amount of time that I give towards certain things, but also have to remember what's more important for that particular day. Um, through doing that, by writing it down, honestly, I always see my productivity levels increase. So I definitely think just doing, just doing things like that, like that's what really helped me writing down and honestly checking things off. Like it might sound generic, but like really you get this increase in like adrenaline and dopamine when you like can really cross something out and like I did that. And uh, honestly, those are the things that just helped me. Like just writing, I love writing things down, like making a checklist. And I think the biggest thing, once again, is just making my life in different categories because it's a constant reminder that I'm making sure my life is balanced and keeping that balance that I seek to have. Yeah, awesome. And it's funny, I do a lot, a lot of those very, very same things. I actually kind of segment uh, my, my, my days out the same way when I'm, when I'm trying to prioritize. Um, so I'm going to mix it up a little bit and have, have a little bit of fun with it just because I'm curious. I didn't even have this part written down. Um, so you said you were bumping a lot of music before. I'm actually a musician myself outside of a few, um, a few other things. So I'm curious to know, when you're riding on that moped yeah. around campus, what do you got playing in the headphones? Give me like top five artists you got playing in the headphones. Okay, okay. And by the way, you guys can like cheer or boo for that performance. <laughs> for that. No. All right, so um, definitely from Chicago. So. Um, chance, yeah, I really. Chance, what we uh, got? Chance, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, definitely in my early college days, I was listening to Acid Rap. Are you all familiar with Acid Rap? Is that like the look? Okay, okay. I know y'all was probably like ten or <laughs> that, nine. When it, that section, though. Yeah. <laughs> so like at the time, Acid Rap, that was my jam. Then you know, Color and Book came out a few years ago. So, um, uh, Ten Day. I love 10 Day because, I mean, for me, 10 Day was just like the representation of how high school was like. You know, it just had those little memories and for definitely sure. like you know, him being from Chicago, just a lot of the stuff you can relate to. Um, so we got Chance, we got Kanye. I love Kanye. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite songs by Kanye is Welcome to the Good Life. So that's, you know what I'm saying? I always be thinking, I'm like, I want to live a good life, so I'm going to just keep bumping this because I'm going to live a good life. Uh, <laughs> Little did y'all know it's actually about to turn into a performance from him. We're going to turn yeah. up the music from Joe. <laughs> Look, I got a secret hidden talent. No, I'm joking with you all. Uh, let's see. Who else I like listening to? Man, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't have to be top five because I hate when people ask yeah, me that. Yeah, you know. So <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I think those two, like Kanye. Big, big I like listening to jazz, too. Um, yeah, yeah. Miles Davis. I know he's a big jazz person. I love, okay, I hear some clapping here. All right, all right. <laughs> so I used to play the saxophone a lot growing up, so like, it's still that love for jazz. And um, it sounds weird, but every once in a while, I might listen to some Beethoven, and I might be studying the Beethoven. Oh, okay, okay. He said, all right, okay. 
So yeah, so, so yeah. I would say those are like kind of my top four. But yeah, that's, that's what keep me going. It got, it's different, but it gave me different vibes and different moves. Yeah. And I think it fits me because I feel like I really have like so many, so many different uh, layers to myself. And I think each of these musical um, you know, concepts really speaks to different parts of my life. Yeah, and that's awesome. I mean, I have, there are um, several studies for yeah. like uh, classical music, jazz, et cetera, being things that help to um, increase yeah. when, you're, when you're trying to study or take in new information. I actually, a strange, this is just a random side <laughs> note, in fact, that I don't think I've ever said publicly, but I listened to um, monks chanting. Over oh, really? You can find like these like three hour long <laughs> things on YouTube yeah, of these monks just doing ohms and whatever else. It sounds weird, but do your homework <laughs> one time and you'll th one time with the monks in the background and you'll thank me later. Um, so, no, for real. Um, so uh, switching gears um, a little bit again, through your whole path yeah. and uh, trajectory, I know for me, the victories are great and yeah. they're wonderful to, to celebrate for the moment. Mm -hmm. But the trials and tribulations and the mess ups and the mistakes mm -hmm. to me have been the, the, the bigger impact Absolutely. moment. So do you have any, any kind of you know, moments of uh, failures, moments of mess ups, whatever else along the way that have kind of molded your, your story? Yeah, so right now, for the most part, I'm going to ask a quick survey. How many of you all are ex like, expecting to go to college? Can I get a, everybody raise your hand? That's awesome. So I think that, yeah, this is probably one of my first times just being upfront about it. But my freshman year at college, I took a calc class. I really didn't do well at all on it. Like, I actually ended up failing it. And, um, you know, I didn't expect that being like a, a good student, you know, coming into college. But uh, for me, it was, it caught me off guard. I was like, what? I'm like, I failed? I was like, wow, like it, I couldn't believe it. Um, but I was down about a few parts, but I, for, me, for me, I knew it was gonna be a learning lesson. At that point, I figured out like college is a whole different game. Like I gotta increase it that much more. So what I did was I went to my office hour, go to office hour when y'all go to college. Like a lot of people don't do it, but it ended up helping out a lot. So I talked to my uh, professor and hey, like what am I doing wrong? Like I, I, I started I study so well, um, but then he taught me like how to study uh, what some suggestions and I just tried it out and from there I learned I caught on to it so quick when I was like oh wow and I just, at that point I started looking at like less I, you know when I took an L or like took a loss or when I went through something pretty bad that I didn't expect I took those opportunities to really kind of embrace it like I'm going to learn something because honestly when I didn't do well on that exam I learned so much more that actually helped me out for the rest of college yeah. and honestly from that point um, that was like one of my one of the like um, things that stood out to me the most because I'm happy I caught on to it so early in college because mm -hmm. honestly it played out so much well. And I know a lot of my friends who some of them didn't even catch on to that until midway in college. So yeah. that was probably one of the biggest things in my college career so far. Um, but I learned it and I'm, I'm like, I have no shame in it. We are not perfect. Like, like we want you to know we're still human beings at the end of the day. And I just, and the day you just learn from them lessons and just push through, see the bigger vision. I knew if I was able to get through that particular um, lesson and I learned how to do well in that, that means I was going to be well off in college and being well off in college is going to you know, put you that much further to where you need to be in life. Yeah. Awesome. Does anybody resonate with that? Can I hear a clap for that? Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> they're, just, they're just so engaged that the eyes are just locked in. They they're focused. They're focused. <laughs> um, so with, with that, because uh, I think about it and kind of uh, reflect a lot now kind of in, yeah. in that same vein um, in terms of ma making mistakes kind of uh, recovering there's a, a book and also philosophy of like uh, fail forward so yeah. you know you're you're failing but anytime that you fail you kind of uh, yeah. just keep pushing along and and, and uh, persevering mm -hmm. um, so what do you kind of in, in that same vein of mm -hmm. books or, or, or knowledge or uh, philosophies do you have any type of things that you kind of carry along with any 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 mantras any um, you know, statements that you, that you use to remind yourself how to, how to stay on track? Um, so one thing, whenever I speak, I always say this, uh, you are the author of your life. Mm. So when I say that, what I mean is every day, you know, it's a new day. I love a new day because for me, it's another page in my story that I get to create. I get to write down a story I want to live. I'll write down a story that I want, you know, other people to read. I write down a story that I want my kids to read. I write down the story that I want to read. So when I am faced with challenges, I could, oh man, this is hard, I give up. But that's how it's gonna be written in my book. And I don't want that. I want it to be, Kevin, he had a challenge and he pushed through it. Kevin, he had a challenge, but 
He learned from it. And guess what? He made, he fell forward. That's the type of story I always read. And when it's time, like, you know, at the end of the day, when you're on a grind so much, there are some days when you really don't feel like doing certain things. And that's just, that's life. But you have to remind yourself what you got to find that motivation. You got to find the purpose, the intention. And for me, like, that's what I needed. So every day, think about it, you all. Like, you're on a high school right now, but it doesn't matter because you all are really writing a life story right now. It starts today. The fact that you all came here today, that's a part of your story. You're going to talk about this to your kids someday in the future. But guess what? Like, you all really, it's up to you all what you get from this. This could be really impactful. Some of you all are going to get something from this. Some of you all might not. I'm not mad at you, whatever. But at the end of the day, how are you going to write this down in your story? Honestly, it's up to you. Most of the things that we face with in life is really all to how we react to it. You know, I think about it, like you do something and you expect a reaction from somebody and they don't react the way you thought they was going to react. That basically speaks to like, that means they just didn't react in that way. So for them, that's how they're controlling it. So just really take control of your own life. You are the author of your life. Every day is another opportunity to write a story in that book. Nice. Very nice. <clears throat> and on that, um, in that same vein, keeping books in terms of relevant topics, uh, there was a statistic, so I own a, I own a, a business, and uh, the, I've read something that basically said the average CEO reads about 60 books a year, and that's a lot of books. And I had to have a little self-reflection moment to say I'm not learning enough. So do you have any like, top, like, top books that, that, that you yeah. want to... That, that you want to give a recommendation for? Um, so yeah, I mean, it's two, actually two books that I, I'm reading. I'm currently reading this book called Crushing It mm -hmm. um, by Gary. You all, are you not familiar with Gary V? Okay. Um, it's, <laughs> oh, okay, I see a hand right here. Nice. We got one. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I, I really like that book a lot because I think it speaks to the current uh, state that we in 2018 with the increase in the information age and learning the importance of uh, personal brand and how that can really create leverage for you to kind of, you know, really create opportunity. I think that honestly, you all should read it because you all are the future. You all use social media so much and you all really don't realize like some of you all do, but there's opportunities there. There's opportunity to connect with other people. It's not just about posting, hey, look at us and I'm hanging out, but you can use that to connect with other like-minded individuals. Uh, for me, it was, it's cool because um, I really learned how to, you know, one, just continue to uh, you know, establish a brand, but also I use that platform to now connect with others. And uh, for me, it's like bouncing ideas. You know, you, you know, at the end of the day, we want to feel a community. It helped me find a community of different cancer researchers, of different people who are being impacted by cancer. Uh, for me, learning that book and, um, you know, using some of those practices that Gary speaks about, uh, really helped me a lot, honestly. So I definitely yeah. recommend for anybody, you don't have to be in science about anybody. If you want to start that business, go ahead. He has so many different principles based on different social media and digital platforms that you know you could take advantage of and crush it. That's the name of the book. So yeah, awesome, awesome. Very good. Do you have uh, I think we have maybe time for another question or two before we have Q and A's. Um, if I had a book recommendation, by the way, well I'm gonna give you a couple. One is the four hour work week. Mm -hmm. Because that one just talks about how to make um, basically like digital um, streams of uh, revenue, mm -hmm. which is just a good one to know. Because what he was mentioning, while you're in college doing whatever else you can be doing, you can kind of be building um, the, the, the life that you want. Um, so that's, that's a good one. Um, I'll save the other ones for a Q&A if y'all yeah. really pay attention. Uh, I do have a really good question that I don't even know if I would know how to answer right now. Yeah. Do you have advice for past you and for future you? More importantly, future probably, future mm -hmm. you, I don't know. Yeah, so you, you know. said, do I have an advice for? Yeah, if you were, if you, if you were in their seats, oh. essentially, I'm sorry, so maybe I'll, I'll uh, specify a little bit more. If you were in their seats, you know, what, what advice would you, mm -hmm. you know, kind of give at that, at that moment, general advice? And then maybe future you advice, something that you yeah. want to make sure you don't forget. So, um, like talking, to, if I was in you all back in high school, if I was talking to, um, you know, high school Kevin, Kevin, you know, remember that this is every day, this is just helping you create the future. You might not see the importance of it now, um, but later down the road, trust me, there is value in it. Like you're going to, you're, you have to move with intention. Everything is in your face for a reason. Take advantage of it. Use the resources that you all do have. Like honestly, you know, even if people are, aren't like helping you out, like go find it, go make it happen. Like take control of your life, like honestly, that's what I did in high school. It really worked out well for me now. Like, and I know you all are. Like, you all come here, you all taking control of your future from being here. Like, that's amazing. 
um, future Kevin, talking to myself currently, um, don't forget you know, your passion, don't forget you know, um, be authentic, just keep being you, don't be something that you're not on this journey. Just remember those who continue to support you, you know, throughout the journey, and uh, just don't forget, you know, st don't forget to have fun with it. <laughs> you know, it could be so serious all the time, but if you're not smiling at the end of the day, why are you doing it? And I think, like for me, that's a constant reminder that I love what I'm doing when I can sit here and talk about it and get so energetic and smile about it. Because I'm telling you all, like I used to be so quiet and shy, where I, you know, think about that and see how much I'm able to talk about things now and smile and just be so calm. Like, just continue to do that, Kevin, and everything's going to work out the way it's supposed to. Cool. Awesome. Can we have a little? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, is it... so, yeah. So, we actually have um, some time to do a Q&A where you all can ask whatever burning questions you have on your mind to Kevin, and I guess I'll open myself up for it, too, if you have questions for me, too. Um, keep it on him, though. No, I'm yeah. <laughs> no, Remember but, um... So, there we go. So the microphones that are here to my right and left. So we have two microphones. If you have a question, just line up behind whichever one is closer to you, and we'll go mic to mic back and forth with the questions. No such thing as a silly question, remember that. Yeah, ask away, be bold. Oh, we got, a, we got one. All right, well, I just wanted to <coughs> ask you, I just want to ask you, how do you feel about Drake? <laughs> <laughs> he got a new album coming out, don't he? <laughs> Is that yeah. a question for both of us or just him? Yeah. <laughs> oh, just, just for me? Him. Just you. Hey, I mean, Drake, no, he, he, he the man. I've been listening to him in high school. Okay, so one of my favorite songs by Drake, actually, it was my freshman year of high school, and it used to be my alarm clock every day. I remember it was that song with him and Trey Songz, uh, Successful. Y'all know that song? I, I just, just want to be, be successful. I just want to be successful. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That was just a mindset. You are probably thinking, like, this guy was just so, like, motivating. No, it was just, I like the song. I like the vibe that I get from it. Because you know, I just told myself, I'm going to be successful, man. But it, it, was a, it was a nice song, though. I really rock with it heavy, so. Yeah. Thank you. No, no, thank you for the question. Got one. Hi, Kevin. Hey, how you doing? Oh, nice. speak a little. Oh. Oh, yeah, there you go. Hi, Kevin. My name is Morgan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. I have two questions. Yes. So you talked about your high school. What high school did you go to? Nice. So uh, I went to Chaz, the Chicago High School for Agricultural Science. <laughs> y'all probably know some people that do. You, have, are you all familiar with Chicago High School for ag yeah. on 111th and Pulaski? Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. why I went. Okay. And what was your experience like at UW-Madison? It was nice. I think uh, for the most part, I, I came in there with uh, a reason. I think that's what helped me. Like I came in knowing I wanted to like get involved with like certain things. So for me, uh, I, I liked it. Once again, it was different. But for me, I got challenged, and that was like one of the biggest things I did want to have when I come into the um, college, uh, whether it be socially or academically. I was challenged in so many of those areas. Um, I think like that was a university that I was supposed to be at because you know right now like you know my interpretation of how you know college was gonna be in high school different than when I was actually in it. Uh, honestly, it was totally different. Um, but once again, I was I was challenged academically. You know, I talked about um, my first exam in college, uh, but also you know that wasn't the only hardest part. Like some of the classes were hard. Like you know taking like medical genetics or like biochem organic chem like things like that uh those classes were hard like i loved it don't get me wrong but i'm really trying to find like that support system and really try to like create that out of really nothing really it's something that for me that was a challenge but i'm happy that i was able to persevere through it um because i know i had a lot of friends who was in the same you know boat with me who was going through it but some of them didn't necessarily like fall through with it so honestly like one of my biggest i'm happy that i did graduate because I know, how, like, to me, it was, it was challenging, but I persevered through it. And I, honestly, it's one of the things where, at the end of the day, nobody can take that away from me because I understood how much work I earned that. You know, I just didn't just get a degree. I earned that degree. Thank you. Well, thank you for the question. Uh, hi, my name is Carly. Um, so you would look someone like look at like Drake for example, and you would say he's like a talented artist. Mm -hmm. Where someone like you with like math and science, you'd be like he's an intelligent person. Mm -hmm. So what would you say your definition of intelligence is? That's a nice question. So no, I like that question because honestly, I don't think it's the person who has a 4.0 GPA. I don't. And I just that's just my opinion. Everybody have their own opinion. No. You ask me that? 
<laughs> no, absolutely. Now, I'm not saying don't do your work in school. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Um, but I, honestly, I think it's that person who can continuously, who, who can learn so many lessons through trial and error. I think that's a real intelligent person because once you fail or something don't work out, you're able to extract an ideal from it or a lesson and apply that for your future. That's a real intelligent person because that means that you are aware. You're aware of your surroundings, you're aware of your future, and you're just being self-conscious of how you can continuously try to uh, do self-improvement. And I think that's a real intelligent person because I don't think too many people actually take the time to really reflect upon themselves and you know, learn from life lessons and like, oh, I, this didn't work out, but what did I learn from it? And how can I tie it into me being better? I think that's an intelligent person, not the person you can like, you know, do, you could just study for the exam and just do really well. I mean, I think anybody can do that if, you know, placed with the proper resources or really if, you, if somebody taught them how to do it. For me, it's about how can you create ideals from life lessons? How can you be innovative? I think that's, in, that's when you're really challenged because it requires you to think and become conscious and really come up with something, once again, out of barely nothing. So let me, I'm actually, yeah, I'm going to piggyback um, on, on that one too. Another thing is to, uh, to know and understand that there's a lot of information out there and that there's a lot of people who have done it before um, and being able to just kind of pull from what's already available to you. Like they say, smart people hire smart people, basically. So if you're not great at something or whatever else, you can basically um, either figure out another another person that may have another skill set and then you, you know, uh, yeah. kind of collaborate. But I think that that's a, r a real uh, show of making the best use right. of uh, your intelligence, I, I, I would say. So and I think we have, I think he was first. Uh, yeah. My name is Leo and my name is Leo and um, I know that you have to take steps in order to like find a cure to cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, like my question is, what other diseases do you want to like find cures for first and then mm -hmm. make your steps to, towards cancer? That's an awesome question. So, you know, outside of cancer, once again, I worked with colon cancer, osteosarcoma, uh, neuroblastoma, but honestly, that's a, I love that question so much because there is like this internal thing within me. I'm like, I want to like, you know, research other, you know, diseases as well. Uh, for me, I'm a big person. I want to learn a lot more about asthma because for me, I had asthma as a kid growing up. Um, also, this, um, this ear thing called tinnitus. Have you anybody heard of tinnitus? It's like this concept where you hear this constant ringing in your ear. Like, I'm always curious about that, uh, just because, like, it's incurable. Like, it's uncurable. There's not a cure for it, but for me, it's like, why isn't there a cure? What research has already been done about it? And things like that, um, it's, just, it's, it's different than cancer, but I know that the skill set that I gained throughout all of my experiences will really be applicable. So, asthma and tinnitus. No, thank you for the question. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Uh, my name is Valerie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, two questions. Mm -hmm. You you talk about uh, building your brand. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk a little bit more about like what does that mean for you? Like what do you yeah. want people to know? I guess is your brand. Mm -hmm. And then also, I know you're in research, but is there an ideal, like an ultimate? position that you'd like to have eventually mm -hmm. as you continue to do research, et cetera? Yeah. Awesome question. So yeah, in terms of like building a brand, when I think of a brand, I think about like your book, like your, your magazine, like the front cover, like breaking news, boom. Like if I Google you, what would I find? Honestly, that's something. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Branding 101. <laughs> you know, I, I see it's funny. Like I could like, so this is like my Twitter and Instagram. If we're talking like on the whole uh, branding. If you want to follow my journey, feel free to um, follow me on here where I kind of share about my story. Um, but to answer your question in terms of branding, I really think about what would I find, what would be like your, the quick impression, your 15 second impression when I learned about you? What are you about? What value are you bringing to people? And also like, who are you? And for me, when I thought about brand, you know, I thought Kevin Stonewall, um, he's, a he's a researcher, don't get me wrong, um, but for me, I'm also a speaker. Um, I also, once again, I consider myself a uh, personal brand coach just really because I learned so much throughout my life and how to establish that name for myself that I wanted you know, people to recognize. And also, not only that, but brand, like what value, once again, what are you doing to impact those in your 
community? What kind of value are you bringing to impact those in that particular niche that you are um, being a brand part of? So, and then also like my also ultimate goal. Um, yeah, so I do think I want to one day like travel the world, continue to speak, and also just serving as motivation and let you know younger students know, and just even like people who are on their way that you can get through it. Like I look at my story, inspiration. Honestly, I just want to travel the world and speak, and continue to do what I do. But I think that's one of my best things that I really, if everything could work out the way that I want it to, and I know it will because I'm going to talk into existence, uh, it's going to happen that way. So, Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Everybody say, uh-oh. Um, How you doing? Have you ever read a book called Henry Had a Lex? Uh, can you say that question again, please? Have you ever read a book called Henry Had a Lex? Yeah, I read that my freshman year of college. Yep. Oh, that was all? Oh, okay. <laughs> she yeah. just wanted to know. She, she yeah. just wanted to know. That's fine. Hey. Um, yeah. just cause, so we'll go back and forth. For uh, how you doing, Kevin? My name is Jabari. Uh, nice to meet you, Jabari. Uh, I was about to say, curing, like trying to find a cure for cancer is a yep. major step mm -hmm. in like, pursuing what mm -hmm. you want to do. Well, how important are the minor steps that you uh, take in life. You said how important are the minor steps? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that, that, that's so crucial. You know, it's, it's creating that foundation. Uh, just like with learning, you want to create that strong foundation, and that's how you're going to build that big building that you want. So the big building would be, you know, carrying a disease, carrying cancer. But I think the minor steps, such as getting mentorship, um, getting lab experience, um, being able to comfortably talk, you know, communicate science, to like a variety of audiences. Because for me, like, yeah, it's awesome that you know the science, but how well can you communicate it? How well can you break it down that somebody who's not familiar with your material understand it? Because once I get to that point, I'm gonna have to talk to a lot of people. Like, I, you're gonna have to get comfortable with speaking. You know, and for me, like, those are like the thing that's gonna be crucial to get into that big point. And every day is just like another opportunity to make it happen, so. And then I got, uh, it was just a statement that you had made earlier. Mm -hmm. You said if you play at 21, you bound to win. I'm, if I'm in that 21, it won't happen. <laughs> uh, don't be hacking. I'm gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. What, what? What is the most dangerous cancer out there? Can you say that again. Most, what is uh, the most dangerous cancer? Most dangerous. Mm. Cancer. <clears throat> Let's see. I would say it might sound like it might sound repeated, but. I think colon cancer. Oh. Uh, the reason being, which I'm actually going to go to the next image. Oh, okay. So this image of the third image, you see me with a group of people. Um, honestly, this past March, like I went to Washington DC to speak at Call on Congress. And this is an advocacy uh, conference where they brought different cancer survivors, um, those who's currently going through different treatment, those uh, different caregivers. But what I bring to that to answer your question is a lot of times people don't get you know, basic screenings. I think any cancer that required that can be prevented through screening. And if you don't take advantage of that screening, like, it's really bad. Like colon cancer, if you don't catch it, it's one of those diseases where you can really catch it at an early stage. And a lot of times people don't necessarily get those proper screening and it end up hurting them really bad. I met a couple of survivors who said, I didn't even know I had colon cancer. They've been having colon cancer since they was 25, because often we're told that older people get colon cancer, but honestly, due to like genetic mutations, um, colon cancer can happen at a young age. So getting a colonoscopy, um, it's different genetic tests as well, but colon cancer, in my opinion, is one of those diseases that does in fact sneak up on you, because the, the signs aren't really there until you go get that colonoscopy and they find different polyps that could be cancerous. So colonoscopy, also, you know, they have polyps. It could be cancerous. It could not, but the earlier you can detect it, the earlier you'll be better, so. How about the least dangerous? The least, oh, well, I don't, I don't know. Hmm. I think, hmm, I think breast cancer, I wouldn't say it's the least dangerous, but there's a lot of progressive research being done in that field. I think there's a lot of like, the support, the advocacy, to have a real strong like presence. If we think about killing, I mean, cancer advocacy, Probably one of the first cancers we think about is breast cancer, just because they have that strong presence. But honestly, there's a lot of research being done, and I've been seeing a lot of work. So I wouldn't say it's the least dangerous, because I think a lot of cancers are dangerous. They all impact people. But uh, in terms of like 
I think the research that cancer has a lot of like progressive research is breast cancer. This will be our last question. Mm -hmm. She's Hi, my name is. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Nancy, and I was wondering at what age um, you decided that you wanted to do this, and what made you want to do this. Yeah, so I saw freshman year of high school. That's when I was exposed to how cancer impacted my friend, um, but I got involved with the research at age seventeen. So. Actually, I'm going to show you, this is Kevin when he was 17. Uh, the picture on the left, I didn't look as good as I look, good, I look now, so, you know, <laughs> puberty did me well. <laughs> no, I probably still look the same and everything, but, no, yeah, this is uh, me back when I was 17. So that's when I started getting involved with it. It was amazing. It was the best, one of the best experiences that I had in my life, because for once, I really felt like I had purpose. You know, I felt like I had a reason to be here on this planet. And uh, for real, at that point, I don't know, life just kind of, I had a whole different mentality about life. Like, I just started owning life. Like, oh, life didn't own me. Life didn't tell me. I, just, I told life what was going to happen for me. So hopefully that answers your question. Let me know if it doesn't. Like. Well, thank you all. It has been a pleasure chatting with you. Kevin, it's been a pleasure. Definitely being able to, to chat and build. Thank you all.